back. We are here with Chef Dave Gilderson. He is with the Grand Tavern. That's right. And you are uh, going to be part of the Wine and Food Festival, I assume? I sure am. Okay, tell us a little bit about your part in that. Well, uh, Friday and Saturday nights, we are going to do uh, uh, four special items as well as our regular menu, which is, is full and complete and awesome as it is. And uh, we have some wine pairings with uh, featuring wines from uh, Robert Mondavi. Okay. Uh, what I was going to do today was uh, one of our entrees uh, for that uh, weekend. We're going to do a steak au poivre with a port wine demi glace. Yeah. Okay. Well, I now, think we're going for that. What are you, uh, your chef, your master chef, uh, do you continue your education all the time or do, do you? All the time. All the time? Yeah. And create new things all yeah. the time, sure. Yeah. Do you create your own dishes? Sure do. A lot of what I do is uh, uh, coming from a uh, French background. Yeah. Uh, uh, so you learn the basics, and then you just sort of play with different ingredients and different flavors. Yeah. But it's all kind of following the same method that people have been doing for hundreds of years. Do you have a, a specialty at the Grand Tavern? Uh, we are known for our scallops, I think, uh, first and foremost. Uh, we do uh, Kobe beef uh, and uh, good lobster. It's all good. I'm very proud of it. Yeah. yeah. I think that most people come there for our scallops or our rack of lamb. Okay. Okay. And it all starts with, with excellent food right? yeah, of course before you cook it sure. so it's got to be top notch mm -hmm. what it that's correct so what did you say you're going to uh, prepare for us today it's a, uh, called steak au poivre it's a peppercorn steak with a okay. port wine demi glace we're going to uh we could have actually used some of uh, margie's port okay uh, but i brought some of my own okay, okay. well let's let's uh, let's see what how it's let's let's go through the process here what do we start off okay. with okay well i'm going to uh season the steaks with uh some salt and cracked black pepper you get almost like a bit of a crust. Why do you why do you use the cracked uh, pepper instead of it being like finely uh, ground up? Uh, you get more of a bite. And this okay. was, uh, I just cracked these uh, probably about an hour ago. Okay. Uh, well, so they're, they're, they're good and fresh. They're pungent. I can really yes. smell them over here. I'm going to season them on both sides. both sides. Okay. Do you do any cloistering while you're All the doing, time. Are you do you? I'm just yeah. wondering. you got a cloister down here. <laughs> We're going to sequester everyone in here while cloistering. <laughs> Cloister. Now, salt and pepper is all you really need. That's correct? you know I do a lot of very basic type of food, and I think salt and pepper uh, needs to go on just about everything, pretty much. And other seasonings can vary, you know, however you want to. But salt and pepper does go on everything. Now, I'm going to. I've now, what did you just pour in there? Just a little bit of uh, uh, canola and olive oil blend. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. And we're going to start searing these steaks mm -hmm. off. Important mm -hmm. to have the pan nice Smoking and hot. hot. And we'll turn it down after we get okay. uh, a bit of a sear on them. Okay, do you so start off with, a, with, a, smoke out with a pretty high heat? or yeah. pretty Yes, hot. Okay. we want to get a nice brown on the steak and uh, just really sear those peppercorns uh, uh, in the steak. Get a nice brown. You know, you're on. really doing something to my salivary glands right now. I know it. <laughs> And I know that you, our viewers, cannot uh, taste or smell the well, they aroma. Well, can the, they can scratch the TV tube or the okay, flat screen, and they, then they smell. That's, That's what's what going next do. after 3D, right? Yeah. There you go. Scratches mm. the TV. Well, it sounds good anyway. Now, what kind of meat is this again? This is a filet of beef tenderloin. Okay. What, uh, part, of the, what part of the beef is that? Uh, that is uh, sort of like with the, the back best. strap of the of the uh, deer. It's uh, just down below that. In fact, it's probably part of the the, the strap. The strap would uh, be the rear by and the, the casing strip, yeah. and the uh, and it goes down the back. The, and it's the a really tender piece of meat. This is the most tender piece yeah. of meat on on the uh, animal. Okay. Cool. Um, <clears throat> so you just keep an eye on that and, yeah. and turn it uh, a little bit. For a little bit. Okay. I'm going to. You want me stuff. To? I actually okay. have a trash can down here. You are All good. Right. What do you know? You're good, yeah. Now, what, I see a little uh, a little uh, porcelain bowl there with uh, a mixture of, is that a special mixture of yours? That is uh, veal demi-glace. Uh, it's the base of a lot of sauces. It's veal stock. We take the veal bones and we roast <laughs> them uh, till they're almost a, a caramel color. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, also roast uh, vegetables, uh, celery, onion, carrot. Mm -hmm. uh, and some tomato, and we um, uh, then we fill it with red wine and water, and let it simmer overnight. Mm. And wow. this is what we get. Kind of a pasty. Yeah, and this will become yeah. the base of our sauce, okay. along okay. with some of the port. Okay. All right. 
Now, what do we have here? Oh, that looks good. I actually prepared a plate uh, for you guys to see. Beautifully prepared. Wow, here we go. Uh, and what's on the plate? What we is have, on the plate? Uh, Duchess potatoes, burgundy, ra uh, burgundy braised red cabbage, asparagus, and carrots. I'm going to go ahead and pull these out. Okay. And begin my sauce. Okay. So now these are considered cooked and done, right? Yeah, it's very simple. We cut and it in half for speeds uh, for time. Okay. Right. But normally it would be just. Well, I might have gotten that one piece. Bit hot, huh? Okay. Whoa! Well, you're a chef. You'll know how to pull yourself out of the fire with this one. So you've got the, the ingredients all mixed up. Yeah, yeah. And, and what do you just make the sauce? It's just, just a little simple, simple process. We're going to bring it back up to a bit of a boil and mm. we'll be done. Well, that was pretty easy. That was exactly. Now, how do I, you... It's all in this. Mm. It is all there. Now, did you cook that as a as a rare steak or... It's about rare to medium rare, yeah. And, and you cook that per directions of the customer, I would assume? Or of do course, you? yeah, however oh, okay. they like. Okay. Yeah, I don't like it when a chef says, uh, you'll have it my way, and that's the only way. Mm -hmm. I think there's somebody spending money on their food. They and can that's, have it how they like. That's I'm when sure you look you... out into the dining room and you see no one. Yeah. yeah. Which okay. would you recommend it at this... I think rare to medium rare is okay. my favorite way to have a filet, but uh, like I said, it's a Everyone matter of opinion. Everyone teaches on us, okay. Correct. So okay. this is one of the dishes that we're going to be seeing uh, during the uh, right. festival, right? We will also be doing a, uh, a grilled, uh, a dirty martini grilled shrimp cocktail, where I'm grilling the shrimp mm. and making a, a, a juniper and olive infused cocktail sauce, uh, served in a martini glass, uh, and we're doing, uh, it's called escalar or butterfish we're going to grill some some of that. It's a very very rich buttery flavored fish we're serving that with a lobster butter sauce mm -hmm. and then for dessert <coughs> i'm going to do a roasted cherry and goat cheese ice cream so oh, a little wow. bit different cheese ice cream yeah that's that's a so new a one in different. my yeah it's yeah. going to have some vanilla and the the roasted cherries and goat cheese it's a really yeah. uh, great uh, combination cool. And all of those will have wine recommendations, and we have uh, also a, a fantastic wine list and a full bar. Mm -hmm. With this, uh, with this uh, plate that you have here, what what would be the preferred wine? I don't know. Anyone can tell me, or would you uh, know? Cab or, or uh, uh, Petite Syrah, just a big, big bold red. A bold red, okay. Yeah. And go ahead. Uh, Teresa mentioned where you're located at the Grand Tavern, but why don't you go ahead and I touch think on that uh, uh, we're probably about uh, 100 yards down the hill from what I've now learned was DeVito's Hill, uh, <laughs> just down the bottom of Main Street. Okay. I'm sure that's a self self proclaimed yeah. name. And the, the Grand Central Hotel. Yeah. Uh, like I said, it's the very bottom of, of Main Street. Um, we've been there for nine and a half years now, so. All right. Yeah. Well, 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 we'll look for you when uh, we come in there. Excellent. All right. Look well. Uh, this festival is going on. I don't have the information in front of me, but do you remember what it was? Because I seventh through the eleventh. Seventh through the eleventh, and for more information, you go to the uh, Eureka Springs Food and Wine Festival dot com. Is that right? Eureka Springs Food and Wine dot com. Leave out the festival there dot com. All right. Well, we are going to take our last break. We'll be back in just a couple minutes, and we'll close out the show with Ann and I, and we'll uh, kind of go over what we just learned. I love these shows, don't you? I love them. You Stay bet. with us.